Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're talking about an MLM we all know and love to hate. One of the most infamous of the lot. Avon. Now, Avon is a lot like Amway. They're both ancient titans of the MLM world. Hell, Amway is the largest MLM out there, whereas Avon is the second largest. Not to mention, Avon is over 130 years old, so you know there's gonna be plenty of dirt to dig up here. But before we get into the good stuff, we're going to talk about who Avon is, why they were founded, and the early years, as per usual. So let's get right into it. Avon began with David Hall McConnell. He was born and settled in in Oswego, New York in 1845 and entered the business life in 1879. David sold books door to door and in 1880 moved to Atlanta, Georgia. In his travels as a book salesman, McConnell made two important discoveries. First, he quickly noticed that his female customers were far more interested in the free perfume samples he offered than they were his books. He made these fragrances himself to serve as door openers when he traveled from home to home. Second, McConnell saw women struggling to make ends meet and recognized in many of them natural salespeople who would easily relate to other women and passionately market the products his new company would first sell, perfumes. Women didn't have the right to vote until 1920, so understandably, many women jumped at this opportunity to give themselves some financial freedom. Even though I'm against MLMs, I get why this was the only option. MLMs today throw around the word empowering until it loses its meaning. But back then, this really was an empowering decision for them, considering women didn't have the freedom to do much else, really. Avon began to expand and file trademarks. By 1902, the company was selling a full range of cosmetics. In 1905, their first full color catalog was released. And in 1939, the name Avon was adopted after Shakespeare's hometown, Stratford-on-Avon. And yeah, I don't really know why they chose that name either, but uh, that's the history of it. But it is undoubtedly factual that they were doing very well. In 1920, they sold $1 million worth of products. By today's standards, that's about $13 million of products. For a while, things seemed to be looking up for Avon. They bought Tiffany, the jewelry company in 1979. However, they sold it five years later. Guess that one didn't work out. Still, Avon was determined to sell jewelry for some reason and bought a different jewelry company, Silpata, in 2010. And uh, I guess they didn't learn their lesson there because big surprise, it failed too. Though they bought the company for 650 million cash, they ended up selling it for only 85 million just to get it off their hands. And that's a pretty big loss. All right, now that we know Avon's history as a business, let's look at what they're selling today. I decided to check out their makeup first since that's what most people know them for. Their lipsticks had decent ratings and were $10 for each matte tube. Now, I don't know if this is just me or some weird thing going on with their site, but when I hovered over some of the lipsticks, it showed an entirely different color from what I was looking at. Like I'd hover over a light pink color and it would show a dark plum shade. So that was at least confusing to me, but maybe that was just a me thing on this particular night when I was looking at the website, I don't know. It also says there's a lower price on lipsticks, $10 instead of 14, 12 instead of 15 if you shop with a representative, things like that. So not only are they pressuring you to support them as an MLM, but the products are, well, less than impressive. I can get an NYX lipstick for cheaper and not support an MLM while doing it. Avon is also selling face masks now, which just comes over as super tacky and it rubs me the wrong way. Can you imagine some Avon lady coming to your door or flooding your social media feed saying, oh my gosh, hon, you've got to buy face masks from us. Look at all these colors. Now I know hun bots have flooded basically every market imaginable and it's super, super pushy and cringy, but $12 for a mask? Plus there's the whole save a certain amount of money on these too if you buy it through a hun bot. I'm, mm, I'm sorry, I meant representative, through a representative. Now, I've heard of other companies using their facilities to make masks, but that's usually to donate them to help shortages or to sell them to the public for dirt cheap. Old Navy is selling them for $2.50 as of writing this. So where does Avon get off charging $10 for one? They're also selling gloves and charging $20 for hand soaps under this shield yourself category on their website, which is pretty obviously new to take advantage 
advantage of the whole pandemic situation. Now, as for the jewelry they're so desperate to sell, it's just not all that impressive to me, to be honest. Their bracelets look like bracelets you could find anywhere. The fine jewelry is the same kind of story. I mean, nothing really looked unique. I could walk into a Kohl's and find the same jewelry, honestly. Everything is something you could buy somewhere else. It's no wonder they failed with Tiffany. I don't get why they're so desperate to be a jewelry company, but this is something they still keep trying to do and it's just clearly not working for them. Now, if it's because they're trying to earn more money, find new facets, new things to sell, then that's one thing, but there's plenty, there's thousands of jewelry companies out there and you've gotta be original standout and they just can't seem to capture the whole being original portion of that whole thing. But otherwise, nothing seemed particularly harmful at a first glance. It was just boring, plain, average quality. And these days that isn't going to stand out much against other larger beauty products, brands or even indie sellers, not when the industry is exploding. So at one point, Avon may have been helping a lot of women and that's just simply not the case now. Over the recent years, they've actually been on a steady decline and I won't pretend they haven't done any good. I'll give credit where credit is due. Avon became the first global beauty company in China to refuse to test on animals for cosmetics. And that is a big deal and a good one. They've also donated millions of dollars towards ending domestic violence and towards the American Cancer Society for breast cancer research. Those are all great things. And I want to acknowledge that even a bad company can do good occasionally. It is just unfortunate that there's a pattern of behavior here that's quite concerning. One of those notable things is their history of bribery accusations. On April 13th, 2008, it was reported that Avon Products Inc., the world's top direct seller of cosmetics, suspended four executives pending an internal investigation of bribery allegations in China, sending its shares down 8%. Avon asked asked three executives in Asia and another in New York to take administrative leave of absence pending the probe's outcome, company officials confirmed on Tuesday. The company's investigation focuses on compliance with the US Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, FCPA, a law that outlaws bribery of foreign officials. In June, 2008, Avon began an investigation into its China operations over an allegation of improper expenses for items like travel and entertainment on behalf of a Chinese government official. And this situation took years to end, and until 2014, in fact, at which time Avon spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the settlement and their lawyers. No bribery charge is a good bribery charge, but this one is especially disgusting. Avon violated the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act by bribing officers that oversaw direct selling regulations in China. Assistant Attorney General Leslie R. Cadwell said public companies that discover bribes paid to foreign officials and fail to stop them do so at their own peril. Companies that cook their books to hide improper payments will face criminal penalties, as Avon China's guilty plea demonstrates, she said. Not only did Avon bribe these people, but they then essentially wrote it off as travel entertainment at meals, when this cash was truly being used to commit a crime. For years in China, it was Avon calling, as Avon bestowed millions of dollars in gifts and other things on Chinese government officials in return for business benefits. Avon China was in the door-to-door -door influence peddling business, and for years its corporate parent, rather than putting an end to the practice, conspired to cover it up. Avon has now agreed to adopt rigorous internal controls and to the appointment of a monitor to ensure that reforms are instituted and maintained. When corporations knowingly engage in bribery in order to obtain and retain contracts, it disrupts the level playing field to which all businesses are entitled, said FBI Assistant Director in Charge McCabe. Companies who attempt to advance their businesses through foreign bribery should be on notice. The FBI, with our law enforcement partners, is continuing to push this unacceptable practice out of the business playbook by investigating companies who ignore the law. And I feel like some words just can't even begin to explain how serious and messed up this is. I've seen some pretty horrible MLMs and outright disturbing fatal products. As much as that sometimes worries me, it's MLMs that think they're above the law and break it for years that seem to fly under the radar that really gets me. And the statement is not limited to MLMs. This is any company that thinks they're above the law. This was going on for at least four years and there's no way in hell the higher ups at Avon could have been unaware of this. They knew and they allowed it to happen. Worse, they didn't just turn a blind eye, but actively supported the behavior by writing the cash off as travel, food, and entertainment when it clearly was not. Now, around this time in 2013, Avon closed in France. Whether that's because of the ongoing legal battle with the whole bribery scheme we mentioned or not, I'm not sure. 
but they shut their doors without a month's warning. Not only is this shady, but it goes directly against Avon's supposed values. Here's what the BBC reported in 2013. Avon has been in France for almost 50 years. It employs about 120 staff in Paris, supporting 11,000 representatives who visit customers in their own homes. Angry workers in France have accused Avon of keeping them in the dark for months and not acting in line with Avon's publicly stated values of being a socially responsible company that upholds values of trust, respect, and integrity, and a culture of open and candid communication. Estelle Croissant, which, yes, that's her name. I get it, Avon France. Haha, <laughs> funny joke, croissant baguette, I'm here for it. Anyway, Estelle Croissant, an Avon employee responsible for supporting the direct selling representatives, told the BBC that a workers' council representing Avon staff in France was challenging the company for not allowing the correct redundancy process. They have not respected all of the processes according to their own rules and values, she said. We now know an administrator has been in place since May last year, but no scheme to assist the workers is yet in place. We just feel abandoned. We knew that this business was not good, but we have all been very committed and worked relentlessly over many months to help the company to try and become profitable. So essentially someone knew for months that Avon was leaving France and the workers were only given a couple weeks notice. That's bad enough, right? You'd think they get a ton of backlash and never do something this callous again, right? No, well, it actually gets worse. Avon announced via Facebook that it planned to exit Australia and the New Zealand markets. People were quick to comment and understandably so. I have been a rep for over 30 years and to find this out on Facebook is disgusting. So much for loyalty, I'm sure they could have sent us all a letter, Jenny Drummond wrote. This is terrible. You owe your reps and customers more than this. To suddenly cease operations after a long history in this country is nothing more than an absolute smack in the face to long serving reps, new reps, and customers, Lola Luciano wrote. People who had only recently signed up as representatives were particularly stunned. I only started two weeks ago, in fact. Last week was my first order, wrote Lynn Wilby. Why let me sign up and spend over $200 knowing this was going to happen? And that is the question. Why the hell did Avon think this was a good idea to announce this on Facebook before every one of their reps knew what was going on behind the lines? It's really just beyond me. Their communication skills are so far past insulting. And this is a multi-billion dollar company. They should know better. You'd see some serious fury if a giant supermarket or retail chain did this to their employees. And I really think this just goes to show that this is how MLMs operate at the end of the day. They do not care about their direct sellers. They don't care how well or how how poor they do, and they just don't even really care about their quality of life in general. They're treated as replaceable, disposable numbers, not people. And I mean, sure, you can argue that at least there was a bit of a heads up on this one for the Australian and New Zealand markets, but that's really no excuse for the way these sellers were treated. Now, aside from their shady business practices, their advertising also has left a lot to be desired. I want to start off with their Super Bowl commercial, where a Hunbot literally says, I can't get fired, I can't get laid off, it's my business. Yeah, okay, how about you tell that to the hundreds of people in France, Australia, and New Zealand? Just, <laughs> this attitude just pisses me off so much. But they have another ad that exactly says this thing over and over with a woman singing, I'm a boss, to the tune of I will survive, and it's so freaking degrading. Like, you're a boss, you can't get fired is the script they want to write, but they also fired thousands in the year before that, and they posted this on their YouTube. Like, that's just crazy insensitive to me. I mean, if I was one of those employees from one of those three countries, countries watching this ad, I'd be fuming. They've also had controversial advertisements in terms of body shaming. One of their ads in 2019 read, dimples are cute on your face, but not on your thighs. In actuality, it's less normal to have no cellulite whatsoever. Even young, healthy women have it, about 80 to 90% of women, in fact. So ladies and gents, if y'all got cellulite out there, it's okay. It's literally called being human and it's normal. But what's funny is using the same model, same backdrop, same everything. They also have the nerve to say in another advertisement that all bodies are beautiful. So bit of mixed messages going on here. Am I beautiful or filled with not so cute lines on my thighs, Avon? Care to explain? And I get it that beauty brands can sometimes walk a very fine line because things can get picked apart these days and hell, 
I wouldn't want to be in charge of promoting something that can get rid of cellulite without making cellulite seem like a bad thing. Now, they did apologize and remove this because this ad was obviously controversial, but it's the other two ads with the deceptive boss babe attitude one that just seems a little bit more disturbing to me, although both are bad. But we're not done here and we're far from it. Avon had two recent lawsuits that took it from being a shady MLM with some problems overseas to a business on the decline. One class action lawsuit alleges that Avon discriminates against pregnant women. The suit alleges Avon distinguishes itself from from mainstream companies based on its passionate commitment to empowering women and that because of this branding, women spend millions on Avon products. The suit goes on to allege that because of this branding, women apply to work at Avon, believing that the company will empower them to succeed and provide women opportunities for advancement. In the complaint we filed today on behalf of our clients individually and on behalf of a proposed US class of pregnant employees and a New York class of women that were discriminated against because they needed to pump breast milk during work hours, Avon must account for why the company for women allows such discrimination to occur and why male leaders of Avon insist on silencing women through the use of forced arbitration to handle complaints rather than the transparent court system, said Janine M. Christensen, a partner at Wigdor LLP, the law firm handling the suit in an emailed statement. One woman in the lawsuit, Ruiz, was made aware of performance issues a day after she told Avon she was pregnant. She asked to work from home because her pregnancy was high risk and was denied and then fired. Another woman, Kristanoska, was subject to discriminatory, hostile working conditions and an unsafe work environment once she disclosed she was pregnant. She was a microbiologist at Avon and asked if she could avoid particular tasks while at work to avoid unsafe chemicals that pose risk for pregnant women. Her boss insisted she continue to work with potentially harmful chemicals. The suit alleges that the workplace was hostile to her during her pregnancy after she returned from maternity leave, when she was breastfeeding, when she disclosed her second pregnancy, and when she requested again not to work with chemicals that could harm her pregnancy. The suit also alleges that her superior confronted her in 2016 when she stated documenting her hostile work environment and started yelling about her efforts. After reporting the incident, she was transferred to a department she had no experience in for a position she was unqualified for and was constructively discharged two weeks later, according to the lawsuit. So yeah, Avon is all for women until they get pregnant or need to breastfeed, I suppose. Super empowering. They're branded as the champion of women, but so far we've seen them harass pregnant women, fire people without warning that have been working for them for years, and push less than savory beauty advertisements. That's not the champion I'd like, thanks. The lawsuit was settled this year in January, so it's not as if I'm dragging up some dark, long buried past here either. This was only a couple months ago. Even while I was doing research on this case, I found another class action lawsuit filed only last year on April 12th, 2019, and this one was for misclassifying workers as independent contractors to make them exempt from labor protections. The 45-page case against Avon Products, New Avon, and Cerebus Capital Management challenges the alleged systematically illegal employment practices affecting Avon workers with the title of district sales manager. The case claims these workers were designated by Avon as independent contractors when they should have been considered bona fide employees and entitled to the workplace protections afforded to such. Avon's alleged misclassification of the workers the suit's two named plaintiffs claimed marks an attempt by the direct beauty product seller to avoid various duties and obligations owed under California and federal labor laws. And we've seen this before with other MLMs like Cutco. Even when you work your way up to a district manager position in the sort of corporate position that would no longer be Hunbot territory, it still is when you look at their books. One of these rights that they were stripped of is called WARN, the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act. They didn't provide 60 day notice when mass layoffs took place from January 21st to June 30th, 2017. Specifically on January 21st, 2017, defendants terminated approximately 140 employees. Thereafter on February 24th, 2017, defendants terminated additional employees, including plaintiff. Finally, on June 30th, 2017, defendants terminated hundreds of additional employees. Such mass termination resulted in employment loss at the facility for at least 33% of the employees, excluding part-time employees. Plaintiffs and members of the Warren plaintiff class were not provided with notice of such terminations 60 days in advance thereof. The lawsuit alleges that this also includes a failure to provide meal breaks, overtime, any breaks really, and you know, 
basic rights you have at a job. But the shit keeps getting better. To see if this case was resolved, and it doesn't seem to be by the way, since it was only filed last year, I looked up California Avon lawsuit to see if any more information could be available. And guess what I found? Another lawsuit. This one from 2013. It alleges the exact same thing as the one I was just looking at. And apparently that one was settled for $1.8 million in 2016. And then no, I'm not joking, but I found yet another one. Avon hasn't had just one district manager sue them because they were classified as an independent contractor, not paid overtime or given workers' rights. They haven't had just two lawsuits, but it looks like they've actually had three. And that's just what I could find about them not giving proper work rights. I'm sure there's probably more somewhere elsewhere. But seriously, I had to go through these tabs over and over and over to make sure I wasn't getting any of them mixed up because they all seem so similar. And yet when you look at the details, they're all different. But then there's one that was filed last year, 2019, and the lawsuit is entitled Rogel versus Avon. And there's one I found through Nelson, the former district manager that was filed in 2013. And, but then there's even another lawsuit that looks like it ended in 2013 from Don Potter Law. And there isn't a ton of information out there about Morrow versus Avon apparently. And I find it weirdly suspicious how all these lawsuits from one to last year, the gigantic one in 2013, and this one all are just conveniently missing from Avon's Wikipedia page. Now, for those of you that do look at my sources that I list in my description box in every single video, there's a pastebin link right at the very top for like all of these videos. You'll notice that Wikipedia is always a source in there. And some of you guys have been critical of me using Wikipedia. Now, let me explain my reasons why. Wikipedia is really good to set up a general timeline. While it may not provide the most accurate information, it can provide me a general layout of where to go, of where to look for things to research. It also happens to be what pops up a vast majority of the time when a consumer is looking for that company. So it's a good insight to see if you were someone looking into Avon, if you were unsure because your friend started selling it, what would you do? You'd type in Avon and a Wikipedia page would pop up. So it's really good to look at that as well and see what is being publicly put out there and very, very easily accessible when I'm crafting these videos. So I find it really interesting that none of these lawsuits popped up. There's no sections for lawsuits, nothing. I've got no clue why this might be the case, but it's definitely interesting and not super normal either. Just because a case isn't settled doesn't mean the public shouldn't know about it, right? I mean, if I were applying to Avon, I'd want to know if they have a pattern of this type of abuse and treating their workers badly. And unfortunately, that's the case here. Though there's multiple factors for why Avon is on the decline, I have no doubt this is one of them. They've been missing their first quarter sales goals, falling about 10% each year for the past few years now. And you don't see them online as much, certainly not the way you see Beachbody, Unique, or Arbonne. Last May, it was reported that the company's loss widened to 32.7 million or nine cents per share in the first quarter ended March 31st from 20.3 million or six cents per share a year earlier. That May marked the 10th straight quarter their active representative count went down. And obviously I hope the numbers continue to plummet. The less MLMs out there, the better. But just before we wrap up today's video, we're gonna go over the numbers. It brings me a lot of joy to expose just how empowering these businesses truly are, especially from a company that's all about being your own boss and then, you know, firing everyone without little notice whatsoever. According to the calculations done by the finance guy, the average Avon rep makes under $25 per week and that's less than $100 a month. Minimum wage is $7.25. So as long as these Hunbots are working more than 13 hours a month, they're getting paid less than the minimum wage. Even from their own recent reports, everything seems to be on a slow and steady decline. Not to mention if they're losing representatives, this means people are losing their downline. I can't imagine it's easy to recruit to this company when they're actively dying. I don't seem to see it has much of a presence as other MLMs and their makeup products are mediocre to average at best. And it's not that the unbiased reviews were all trash talk, but I didn't exactly see anyone fall in love with products either. Granted, those are very few unbiased opinions out there. Just about any review you'll find has some sort of link to buy the products through them or through someone they know. Overall, the only good this company has done is support support breast cancer research and domestic abuse charities. With the damage they've done and how they treat their employees though, I don't think that alone could make them something worth supporting. 
It's like unique or pure romance. A fraction of a percent may go towards actually supporting women, but the rest of it goes towards bringing women down, paying them less than minimum wage, firing people without any notice whatsoever, or simply because they're pregnant. Yeah, what a champion for women we've got here. But all in all, I really hope that Avon does continue to decline until eventually they go under. Things seem to be on that route, even if they've managed to stay alive this long. What they did overseas to pregnant employees and district managers, I found really disheartening and disgusting. No one, no individual business, nothing can empower women with that kind of attitude. So with that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you want more content from me, pop open my description box. You're gonna find links to all my sources for this video, my second channel for my puppy Casper, collaboration channel with Sad Milk, all of my social media, and a whole bunch of good stuff will be down below. So again, guys, thank you so much for making it to another video. I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.